Now, the annual London Indian Film Festival is kicking off tomorrow. There is a lineup of independent films offering a window into the lives of ordinary South Asians. Among them is a film called Love, Sonia, an upcoming Indian film based on the gritty world of global human trafficking. Well, I'm pleased to say I'm joined here in the studio by the director, Tabriz Nurani, and the producer of the film, David Womark, who joined me here to tell me a little bit more about the film. Thank you both and welcome. Thank Tabriz, you. I'll, I'll start with you. I mean, just tell me a little bit more about this film. Well, it initially started because I stumbled upon a story about a girl who'd been trafficked. Um, I was in the midst of doing a film, and uh, one of the stories had to do with a girl who was trafficked from a village. And, uh, Pretty much at the same time, I stumbled upon this story and I got sucked into the world of global sex trafficking because like other people, I only thought that it happened in Mexico, US, mm -hmm. Moldova, UK, uh, Nepal, India. For me, it was shocking that a girl from China or India would be caught in a container in LA or trafficked. In Hollywood. In Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, it's, th this is qu what's quite extraordinary yeah. about this film is that they're all true stories. Yeah. You know. it, not only is it true, but when we've screened the film, because we've done very limited screenings with friends and family, and you screened it in Los Angeles, some of the more uncomfortable moments are actually when Sonia arrives in L.A. Because people all of a sudden reflect upon their own culture and realize, like Tripa just said, yeah. it's part of, it's it's part of us now. It's all happening in some far yeah, away. It's all happening it's far away plus. Yeah, and the whole idea yeah. was to bring it home. It's about bringing it back home because, you know, Four years ago, when the ILO reported it's a $150 billion uh, business a year, I think s everyone woke up. And the only way that's possible is if it's happening mm. everywhere, so literally down the street from you. And then people start to get uncomfortable, but then they, it also opens their eyes. Indeed. I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? It's a billion-dollar industry. Girls as young as sort of eight or nine are being trafficked. And every country is somehow involved. Every country. And I think one of the biggest challenges for us as filmmakers was there's an invisible line, an invisible line between nobody wants to exploit, they exploit it. But at the same time, if you, if you make a film that's soft and you don't really explore what's going on in this world, you haven't done justice to the actual issue. Yeah. So that's one of the things we had to navigate yeah. as we were making because the film. The, and I think that's why it's taken so long to get it made because I didn't, I didn't want to water it down. And if you aren't going to water it down, it means that it's very hard hitting. And when David and I partnered, David said, this is the only way to do mm. it. You know, because it, it, it makes it then difficult to go mainstream, right? When it's that hard hitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I think that uh, the biggest thing, because I work with so many NGOs, was you want to honor the girls. You don't want to water down the experience that they have. But at the same time, uh, you don't want to cross that line. Uh, don't exploit the exploited. So. Uh, I mean, you, you directed a Slumdog Millionaire, and of course you directed... Actually, I was a, sorry, I was a producer. <laughs> you were the producer, <laughs> and, 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 and then Life of Pi as well. Producer. Yeah. Producer of, of yes. Life of Pi. I mean, two... The great Ang Lee. <laughs> massive, <laughs> massive films yeah. um, that, that really captured the imagination of audiences worldwide. Are you hoping that this film will do something similar and make such an important issue, you know, something that people talk about everywhere? You know, I think when you look at Life of Pi, what was unique about it was it was a story about a little Indian boy in a boat <laughs> with a lot more implications than that. But I think the audience is actually hungry for cinema that, that's world cinema. And I think this is a part of world cinema. And even though it's exploring a political issue, at its heart, it's still a story about these two sisters and their journey. So I think, I think we're going to do very, very well. It's interesting because both of the films that you've previously been involved in haven't been big Bollywood films, you know, yeah. and, and, and making those accessible for an Indian audience. I mean, how are you finding that challenge? We've been very lucky that we were able to the assemble cast. a really good cast. I mean, initially when we started, you know, obviously Frida and I had been working on it for a while, uh, but I didn't know the rest. And pretty much everyone said yes. Um, they, I mean, we gave them the script, they knew when we were going to shoot, and they signed on. And we've ended up assembling this amazing cast, which enables us to have a pretty good release now in India um, on, on a large number of screens. And then after that, we 300 opened, screens, I yeah, think. Yeah, 300, 350 yeah. screens. And then we opened in China after that. So um, fingers crossed, yeah. You, you were telling me earlier that it's taken you something like 12 years, you know, to, and you guys have been working together on this four. for something like yeah. five or four. Yeah. Why has it taken so long? So initially, it was a mix of, because I needed it to be authentic, I didn't have all the stories, I didn't have, 
I knew what happens up to the time they get to LA. I didn't know enough about uh, organizations in LA or what happened in LA. I started working with an NGO uh, called COST, the Coalition to Abolish mm -hmm. Slavery and Trafficking, and worked with them a lot. I got involved in rescues in India, uh, where we'd rescue girls. And so through all those experiences came more real life stories, uh, which weaved its way into a screenplay. Mm -hmm. But at that point, no one wants to make a movie about sex trafficking uh, in Hindi. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And it was just me. Then, you know, obviously, one, once David got involved, we worked on the script some more. And by the way, still nobody still wanted to make a film about a little right. brown boy in a boat. <laughs> in a boat, I'm just exactly. Saying, yes. or, or, or a child, you yes. know, who, in That's Slumdog. Right. Yes. Where, you yes. know, so, so actually, yeah. the, the, the people will watch these films if, if the if story... If you touch people's heart. Absolutely. Yeah. And this film touches people's heart. Mm -hmm. Indeed. In and, a very and, powerful way. And, and deals with a much bigger issue. Yes. Trafficking. Yes. yes. Yeah. A massive issue, a global issue now. And, uh, you know, we're hoping it's, it's, it's a hard-hitting film. Uh, but the truth is, I mean, so far people who walk into it, they just get involved in the story. But I also want to say that I think the subject matter itself now, because of all the, the gender, hashtag Me Too, I'm going to say revolution, because it is a revolution, a healthy revolution that's going on. I think if you think of the root of the root of the problem, this is the root of the root, because this is exploiting people. For, this has been going on for thousands of years. Indeed. We'll yeah. have to leave it there, David yeah. and Therese. Thank you both thank for joining us here on the program. We'll be back shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you.